welcome back to my channel if you are new here my name is Nos Pusari and on this channel we talk about nursing content and nursing lectures don't forget to subscribe to join the family and give us a thumbs up so today I got a few requests from some students on how to write their research papers so I decided to make a video about it and simplified nursing research here I have it aligned in my book here so I don't forget anything I actually wrote out all the tips and treats so I'm going to be starting from the beginning so, okay, so the first thing it. number of chapters in the research we have five chapters I've actually heard a few students talking about chapter 6 chapter 7 which is actually wrong there are just five chapters in nursing research for a Nigerian school though I don't know how they do it in the States or in London or any part of the world but here in Nigeria it is five chapters so I'm going to talk about everything that makes up each chapter I'm starting from the first chapter which is chapter one and the title of chapter one is introduction so the first item in chapter one is your background of study some supervisors like it to be written as background to the study some like it as background of the study some write it as background of study so anyway your uh, supervisor likes it you put it that way but what actually makes up your background of study is more or less an overview of your research so today i'm going to be using an example of a student that is researching on prevalence of drug abuse among students of an unnamed university so if the student is writing a background of study i advise students take it from a global level to a continent level to a national level and then possibly to the area they are researching on in other words that student should talk about what drug abuse has done on a global level in africa in nigeria and if there is any information available about the state you are in you put it in there so that makes up a very comprehensive background of the study the next one after the background of the study is what you call the statement of problem just as name implies statement of problem you're trying to bring out the problem you want to solve by the research the next thing is your research objectives most time i advise students to always align the number of research objectives with research questions and research hypothesis they will get to that later but for research objective it is actually what or why you want to do the study what you intend to achieve so, so for example so the study i gave about students carrying out a study on prevalence of drug abuse among students in an unnamed university the objective of that student could be to assess knowledge of students about drug abuse to determine factors contributing to drug abuse among students and to determine the prevalence which is actually the broad um objective of the whole thing the prevalence of drug abuse so you want to know what they know about drug abuse why they abuse drugs and how they abuse drugs like how often do they abuse drugs is it more common among the boys or among the ladies is it more common about students in a particular department is it more common about among students in a particular hostel or a particular faculty or you know just try to find out how or the trend at which they abuse drugs that is just the objective so the next one i talked about is the research question so for that student i want to carry out that example of topic i gave the research question could be what's the level of knowledge about students on drug abuse what um what trend what is the trend of drug abuse among the students what are the factors contributing to drug abuse among the students at the end of the day in the research you'll be finding out that gender family background are factors that are contributing i hope you are catching my gist so that is where the student is heading towards so aside from research questions i mentioned something called research hypothesis now a research hypothesis is more or less a scientific guess you are trying to guess that this will cause that this may cause this for example in that example of topic i gave that example we're working on there is no significant relationship between the age of a student and drug abuse you are guessing that the age of the student does not matter if that particular student is going to abuse drugs or not now if you notice my hypothesis was there is no significant relationship that kind of hypothesis is called null hypothesis but there are different types of hypothesis that will be discussed in another video but most times in nursing research here in nigeria we advise to use a null hypothesis so if at the end of the research your hypothesis is right you reject the one you gave in chapter one and accept the alternative which is that there is a significant relationship between the age and abuse of drugs i hope you are getting my gist so next thing on chapter one is scope of study where yeah. if you're carrying it out in those states you put on those states 
to carry it out in maybe students of <laughs> and let me let's grammar school and those things. I don't have anything against that school anyway. Anyway, it's just I'm just giving I'm just my example. So if you're carrying it out among students of let me say the Preston Grammar School or the Golden Pen Grammar School, you make that your scope of study. So aside from that, the last item in chapter one is operational definition of terms. What makes the dictionary definition different from operational definition of terms is the way you put it. If you're saying knowledge is what they know about this, if you're making the operation, it should be knowledge, what students of social school know about this, you apply it to your study. Now, your operational definition of terms is more like this is what this particular theme refers to in my study. If in the normal, in in normal range, in the normal textbook, Teenagers starting from maybe age 19, just an example, maybe age 15 to age 19, that's what you have teenagers to be. But in your own study, you're saying that teenagers start from age 14. That is your operational definition of them. That is what you want teenagers to be in your study. So that definition only applies to your study. So that's operational definition of them. And that is the end of chapter one. So the next chapter we'll go to is chapter two. I have that outline here as well. So there are three basic things in your chapter two. You have the conceptual review, you have the empirical review, and the theoretical review. Those are the three basic things that you have in your chapter two of a nursing research. I'm not talking about accounting or MLS. What we are talking about here is nursing research in Nigeria. So in chapter two, I already mentioned three outlines, but all of these topics have their subtopics or subgroups that come under them. So if you're talking about your conceptual review, for the example I gave earlier on, when a student working on a research about students of drug abuse among students of an unnamed university, conceptual review will contain things like drug abuse, causes of drug abuse, trends of drug abuse in Nigeria, drug abuse among undergraduates, drug abuse among women, drug abuse among children, different concepts that are actually related to your study that you can get material on. Yes, this is something I have to mention. Usually in the nursing research, that's for those who want to take the registered nursing examination, the basic courses, it's advised that if you're taking information from a textbook, it should not be more than 10 years. And if you're taking it from a journal, it should not be more than five years. So this is 2020. You should have test the textbook, um, the textbook you should have should be, the oldest textbook you should have that you're referencing in your work should be from 2010. And the, for the journal, the order should be from 2015. That is the way, that is the standard for nursing research. I don't know why. I'm not nursing counsel. Don't ask me. So, <laughs> so for your conceptual review, I've explained. In your theoretical review, you have to look for a theory that backs up the study you want to do. There are different theories that you could use. You could have else belief model, else emotion model, and a whole other of models. Most of the models you learn when you were in year two or year one, like 200 level year one in school nurses. Most of those nursing theories, them Callister Royce theory, nursing Elm Royce Nightingale theory, and so many other theories in nursing. This is where you bring it back to apply it to whatever research study you're carrying out. And you have to put the image that shows the constructs of the study inside your research paper to make it valid. Then you apply. There's another section on the theoretical review that shows the section for application of the study to that particular research you're carrying out so for this study the example i gave earlier on i would have recommended health promotion model or health predict model those two i love those two theories they work for most nursing researches that most um undergraduate nurses or basic nurses do those two models always work however if you're having a research study that is not um applicable to that theory you're going to have to find a different theory for your study the last thing in chapter two is your empirical review empirical review is basically what this person said about the kind of research i want to do in a different place so if the research you're carrying out has actually been done in sokoto state karaba jobe ondo aimo anambra and so many other states in nigeria you try to bring it back for example Abubakar and um, Christopher in 2018 carried this study, carried out the study in Castina State among students of so so universities, and from their results, they found out that 49% of the students abuse drugs. 
50% of the students claim that they are dropped because of their family background. 30% agree that you just try to bring out what they found out from their study. So somebody that lived in Casina, you bring the name and the results. Someone that lived in Yobe, someone that lived in Bonu, this is in Ogo State, in Lagos, different parts, Potakos, you bring them down into your research study, taking notes that they are not more than five to ten years, depending on if you're using a textbook or a journal. So that is for empirical review and another thing about empirical review, it is advisable to um for this week. Let's take a talk about chapter three. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to come back for our videos. Give us a thumbs up and if you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section. Bye -bye.